If you could be facing luxating patella surgery with your dog, or even a surgery that requires a relatively long period of crate rest, stay tuned. I'd like to share my experience of what the first two weeks of surgery has been like for my puppy scheme, along with some ideas on how to get through the first stages of a long recovery period with a very active dog. Skeen is a five-month-old Border Collie, and a very adventurous Border Collie at that, so I was very apprehensive about the healing stages of this surgery. There is no running, no jumping, no playing for at least six weeks, so that is really tough on a young Border Collie puppy. Skeen has a long road ahead, and surgery was just the beginning. But two weeks post-surgery is two weeks closer to recovery. Skeen had patella surgery on July 9th. He had grade four patellar luxation, which means that his kneecap was on the inside of his leg instead of in the groove where the kneecap normally sits. Because his luxation was so severe, he probably had a congenital deformity. So he's been living with his kneecap out of place for most of his young little life. During the surgery, it was found that Skeen had no trochlear groove, which is where the patella should sit. The vet showed me a picture and the trochlear groove was actually roundish in shape, so it had never really developed at all. A groove was created with the surgery. Skeen's healing process is reflective of the specific type of surgery done for him, and in each case that's going to be a little bit different. The surgeon said there is a likelihood of Skeen having another surgery after he is finished growing. The way I understand it is that Skeen's tibia was also rotated, but because his growth plates aren't yet closed, this particular surgery can't be done. But it was also very important to create that trochlear groove to prevent future problems for Skeen. I'm really hoping that he won't need a future surgery, but time will tell. During the first week, I found it really hard to do icing or passive range of motion exercises with Skeen because he really did not want me touching that leg. I didn't push it, but I did use ice for short periods of time and would do some passive range of motion when he would let me. At the vet's office, I was told to keep Skeen's plastic cone on at all times in order to prevent him from licking his incision. I find those cones so awkward and uncomfortable, but I really did not want him to lick his incision. I did try some alternatives. I had an older, small-sized heads-up water collar, and I put that around his neck, but he could actually still get at the incision. So I was able to find another more flexible cone at the pet store. This cone still didn't allow him to lick his incision, but it was just a little bit more flexible and a little bit less awkward for him to move around inside of his crate. Although he doesn't love wearing it, I'm pretty happy with it because it's just easier for him to manage. If a dog was really insistent about licking their incision, maybe this cone would be too flexible. For Skeen, it worked really well, and like I said, I was really happy with it. Skeen was really not putting much pressure at all on his foot for about the first four days, and I started to get a bit worried. But on the Saturday, which was four days after the surgery, he started to very lightly put a little bit of weight onto his foot. Nine days post-surgery, his knee was still quite inflamed and warm, so I was told to start using ice again. I know there are differing opinions on ice and when it should be used, so you really have to check with your vet to know what's exactly right for your particular dog and your dog's situation. I used a flexible ice pack and a towel, and I also used a few treats just to get Skeen distracted so that the ice wasn't bothering him so much. As I said, he was very wiggly and very reluctant to let me touch his leg. So using treats and distractions can be helpful when you have a wiggly, uncooperative little puppy. Dealing with a young puppy really is different than dealing with an adult dog. With the passive range of motion exercises, I actually found it easier to do when he was standing. I would try to do them as frequently as I was able without too much discomfort and making sure that he was relaxed and not fighting me while I was doing it. I also made an appointment with the rehab clinic for the third week, which in his case I think was really important. And I'll talk about that in the next video. Skeen is just over five months old and he was also teething during the first two weeks of the surgery so he had a number of restless nights. I bought a pretty sturdy harness for him, which has really helped when he's tried to wiggle or jump. It gives me much better control. When Skeen was having a really restless night, I attached the leash to the harness and I actually wrapped it around my body so that he could lay on the bed with me. 
Now I don't think any vet would recommend that because obviously you don't want the leash to get twisted around him or end up letting him fall off the bed or rolling on top of him. But I was really careful to make sure there wasn't enough leeway for him to roll off. And I'm a pretty light sleeper so I, I knew as soon as he tugged on the leash and we were both able to get a better night's sleep because of it. I definitely would not have done this though without a body harness on him. I think using just a collar would have been actually quite risky. Although Skeen didn't have diarrhea, about two days post-surgery he started to have quite loose stool and then when he finally went off the Percocet his stool pretty much went back to normal. I don't think Percocet is known for that specifically but you never know what combinations of drugs can do for a little puppy. Anyway, he seems pretty much fine with that now. He was also really thirsty the first few days when he came back. And because he was in a crate a lot, I really had to make sure he had ample access to water. His thirst pretty much seems back to normal now. My biggest fear with Skeen is doing damage just because he is an active Border Collie puppy. So when Skeen was finished the Percocet, he started taking Trazodone as a sedative. Now, it's hard to give your Border Collie puppy a sedative but if it's in their best interest, you have to do what you have to do. I just want him to have the best possible chance to heal well. I would say that especially for the first two weeks, the sedatives were really important. I really expected and wanted to be doing more mentally stimulating brain exercises, but during the first two weeks, there were a lot of adjustments and there was a lot to do with icing, passive range of motion and the short walks and also he really needed his rest just to heal. The dog strollers also allowed me to give Skeen some freedom and just get him outside with the other dogs. So I really just didn't end up doing a lot of training for that first two weeks. Again, the stroller has really just been a lifesaver for me, allowing Skeen that freedom that he wouldn't have if I had to leave him home at the house. When he started to feel a little bit better, Skeen started to get a bit feisty in the stroller. So I started varying where I let him out of the stroller to do our short walks. That way he never seems to feel too stuck in the stroller. He also dug at some dog treats that managed to find themselves in the seam of the stroller. So I had a little bit of sewing repair that I had to do. It's still worth it. I just absolutely love the stroller and it was used, didn't cost me very much money. So I'm just so grateful that I was able to find it. The other thing is that if your dog is a puppy or is a little bit feisty in the stroller, it's a good place to make sure that they're wearing their cones to make sure that they can't actually rip at any of the seams. So when I take my other dogs for their walk and I have Skeen in the stroller, this is the perfect time for me to do Skeen's potty breaks and then to stop and take him for his short controlled walks. A friend gave us a snuffle mat and Skeen used that almost every day after we got it. It's just a fun way for him to get his food. He basically sniffs out his food inside the mat and it just keeps him a little bit busy. A friend also lent us some puzzle toys and he figured the first one out fairly quickly, but it's another good brain teasing thing just to keep his mind occupied. He's also had some frozen rubber chew toys filled with yogurt, peanut butter and pumpkin. His crates are good for resting, but his surgeon specified that he does need to be able to walk around sometimes in order to help that knee gain range of motion. But jumping has to be avoided for six weeks in order to protect the soft tissues. The problem with the X-Pen is that sometimes he would jump up on the sides of it. So the X-Pen could only be used under supervision. So although being in a crate is a good option when he can't be supervised, I found that keeping him in small rooms allowed him to get up and move around a little bit more. But he has to be supervised and he's not allowed to jump up on any furniture or roughhouse with the other dogs. Here's a compilation of his progress over the last two weeks.
when you're at the start of the surgery it just seems like it will go on forever but two weeks into the process is two weeks closer to recovery it's hard when your puppy can't just completely be a puppy but although we were very busy with all the adjustments the first two weeks were not quite as hard as i had anticipated it's true that skiing can't just run and play when he wants to but he can greet people and he's learning a lot of control skills and so it's not all terrible and he'll have the rest of his life to make up for this period of recovery i'm sure we'll have many adventures in the future and this is just one of them skiin had his sutures out on july 23rd the vet was comfortable with how his incision was healing and with his progress so far. Skeen also had his first rehab appointment on July 24th, which I'll talk about in the next video. When I have that video ready, I'll put the link somewhere around here and also in the description below. Also, if you haven't seen the beginning of Skeen's luxating patella story, I'll put a link to that playlist about here. If that doesn't show up for you, it will be in the description below. Dogs have a way of making our hearts grow bigger, not just from the joy they bring us, but also from the care that they require from us in order to give them the best lives possible. From my heart to yours, have a possum day, and I hope you'll join us for our future adventures. <laughs>